The green economy is defined as an economy that aims at reducing environmental risks and ecological scarcities, and that aims for sustainable development without degrading the environment. It is closely related with ecological economics, but has a more politically applied focus. The 2011 UNEP Green, Economy Report argues that to be green, an economy must not only be efficient, but also fair. Fairness implies recognizing global and country-level equity dimensions, particularly in assuring a just transition to an economy that is low-carbon, resource-efficient, and socially inclusive." A feature distinguishing it from prior economic regimes is the direct valuation of natural capital and ecological services as having economic value see the economics of ecosystems and biodiversity and bank of natural capital and a full cost accounting regime in which costs externalized onto society via ecosystems are reliably traced back to, and accounted for as liabilities of, the entity that does the harm or neglects an asset, green sticker and ecolabel practices have emerged as consumer-facing measurements of friendliness to the environment and sustainable development. Many industries are starting to adopt these standards as a viable way to promote their greening practices in a globalizing economy. Green. Economists and economics Green economics is loosely defined as any theory of economics by which an economy is considered to be component of the ecosystem in which it resides after Lynn Margulis, a holistic approach to the subject is typical, such that economic ideas are commingled with any number of other subjects, depending on the particular theorist. Proponents of feminism, postmodernism, the environmental movement, peace movement, green politics, green anarchism and anti-globalization movement have used the term to describe very different ideas, all external to mainstream economics. The use of the term is further ambiguated by the political distinction of green parties which are formally organized and claim the capital G. Green term as a unique and distinguishing mark. It is thus preferable to refer to a loose school of «green economists» who generally advocate shifts towards a green economy, biomimicry and a fuller accounting for biodiversity. See the economics of ecosystems and biodiversity especially for current authoritative international work towards these goals and Bank of Natural Capital for a layperson's presentation of these. Some economists view green economics as a branch or subfield of more established schools. For instance, it is regarded as classical economics where the traditional land is generalized to natural capital and has some attributes in common with labor and physical capital since natural capital assets like rivers directly substitute for man-made ones such as canals. Or, it is viewed as Marxist economics with nature represented as a form of Lumen proletariat, an exploited base of non human workers providing surplus value to the human economy, or as a branch of neoclassical economics in which the price of life for developing versus developed nations is held steady at a ratio reflecting a balance of power and that of non human life is very low, an increasing commitment by the UNIP and national national governments such as the UK to the ideas of natural capital and full cost accounting under the banner green economy could blur distinctions between the schools and redefine them all as variations of green economics as of 2010 the Bretton Woods institutions notably the World Bank and International Monetary Fund via its green fund initiative responsible for global monetary policy have stated a clear intention to move towards biodiversity valuation and a more official and universal biodiversity finance. 
Taking these into account targeting not less but radically zero emission and waste is what is promoted by the Zero Emissions Research and Initiatives. The UNEP 2011 Green Economy Report informs that based on existing studies, the annual financing demand to green the global economy was estimated to be in the range $1.05 to $2.59 trillion. To place this demand in perspective, it is about one-tenth of total global investment per year, as measured by global gross capital formation. Definition Carl Burkhardt defines a green economy as based on six main sectors Renewable energy Green buildings Sustainable transport Water management Waste management Land management the International Chamber of Commerce ICC representing global business defines green economy as an economy in which economic growth and environmental responsibility work together in a mutually reinforcing fashion while supporting progress on social development. In 2012, the ICC published the Green Economy Roadmap, containing contributions from experts from around the globe, brought together in a two-year consultation process. The roadmap represents a comprehensive and multidisciplinary effort to clarify and frame the concept of «green economy». It highlights the essential role of business in bringing solutions to common global challenges. It sets out the following ten conditions which relate to business, intra-industry and collaborative action for a transition towards a green economy. Open and competitive markets Metrics, accounting, and reporting Finance and investment Awareness Life cycle approach Resource efficiency and decoupling Employment Education and skills Governance and partnership Integrated policy and decision making Topic ecological measurements Measuring economic output and progress is done through the use of economic index indicators. Green indices emerged from the need to measure human ecological impact, efficiency sectors like transport, energy, buildings and tourism, as well as the investment flows targeted to areas like renewable energy and cleantech innovation. 2010–2018 Global Green, Economy Index GGEI, published by Consultancy Dual Citizen LLC is in its sixth edition. It measures the green economic performance and perceptions of it in 130 countries along four main dimensions of leadership and climate change, efficiency sectors, markets and investment and the environment. 2009–2012 Green City Index A global study commissioned by Siemens 2009–2013 Circles of Sustainability Project scored five cities in five separate countries. Ecological footprint measurements are a way to gauge anthropogenic impact and are another standard used by municipal governments. Green energy issues Green economies require green energy generation based on renewable energy to replace fossil fuels as well as energy conservation and efficient energy use. There is justification for market failure to respond to environmental protection and climate protection needs with the excuse that high external costs and high initial costs for research, development, and marketing of green energy sources and green products prevent firms from voluntarily reducing their ecological footprints. The green economy may need government subsidies as market incentives to motivate firms to invest and produce green products and services. 
The German Renewable Energy Act, legislations of many other member states of the European Union and the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, all provide such market incentives. However, other experts argue that green strategies can be highly profitable for corporations that understand the business case for sustainability and can market green products and services beyond the traditional green consumer. Criticisms <coughs> 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 A number of organizations and individuals have criticized aspects of the green economy, particularly the mainstream conceptions of it based on using price mechanisms to protect nature, arguing that this will extend corporate control into new areas from forestry to water. The research organization Etc. Group argues that the corporate emphasis on bioeconomy will spur even greater convergence of corporate power and unleash the most massive resource grab in more than 500 years." Venezuelan professor Edgardo Lander says that the UNEP's report, Towards a Green Economy, while well-intentioned, ignores the fact that the capacity of existing political systems to establish regulations and restrictions to the free operation of the markets, even when a large majority of the population call for them, is seriously limited by the political and financial power of the corporations." Ulrich Hoffmann, in a paper for UNCTAD also says that the focus on green economy and «green growth» in particular, based on an evolutionary and often reductionist approach will not be sufficient to cope with the complexities of climate. Change. And may rather give much false hope and excuses to do nothing really fundamental that can bring about a U-turn of global greenhouse gas emissions. Clive Spash, an ecological economist, has criticized the use of economic growth to address environmental losses, and argued that the green economy, as advocated by the UN, is not a new approach at all and is actually a diversion from the real drivers of environmental crisis. He has also criticized the UN's project on the economics of ecosystems and biodiversity, and the basis for valuing ecosystems services in monetary terms. See also